I just wanted to ask you a little more about the provisions for Ukrainian refugees currently and uh, specifically the contract with, I believe, Aramark are going to provide catering facilities. Is that, is that correct? Uh, there is, there is, at the moment, like we have, we've contracted, I think, over 350 accommodation settings, be it hotels, B&Bs, other forms of accommodation, some of which could be, um, you know, former convents or uh, other facilities where uh, facilities management services would need to be provided. So specifically, there are, um, I know Aramark have two contracts, uh, one in the Green Glens Arena in Mill Street in County Cork, and uh, one in the Ballyogan Rest Centre in Dunleary, uh, which are larger settings accommodating large numbers of people in both instances. In the case of the Ballyogan one, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially a, a rest centre where people can be accommodated for a small number of days before moving on into, into other accommodation. Uh, in both cases, um, Aramark were contracted to provide facilities management services. There's, as, as I say, there are, there are a number of other locations where we have also contracted facilities management services, and I know Aramark have at least two other contracts that I'm aware of. And it's in, in, in relation to this? So say yeah. I'm familiar with Ballyogan, it's just on the edge of my constituency and, and Mill Street. How, may, you know, how many people are being provided for there? The capacity there is 300. In total uh, between the two? In Ballyogan. Yes, yeah, in Ballyogan. Yeah. Uh, the, the capacity in the Green Glens Arena is similar. It's about 300 or 350, I think. 400. And do you, um, what I'm curious about is the, the process that you went through in relation to that contract. It was done right, prior to that. There had been local providers engaged, local Irish providers engaged, um, for example, with vaccination centres and, 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 and during during COVID and so on. What was the process by which? In Armark... respect to both of those contracts specifically, yeah. yeah so so in 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 both cases, um, in both cases, we would have approached a number of facilities management companies, and indeed, in in, in a number of wider cases. Basis, we would have been in contact with a number of facilities management companies. Ultimately, only two companies were able to meet our needs, um, and so it was it was a directly negotiated contract in both cases, which obviously isn't procurement compliant, um, but it but it, but it is a factor of the emergency response that we were involved in, where we are trying to procure and provide and bring on stream additional accommodation on a daily basis to meet the demand that has been arising. Um, and obviously in, 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 a, in a case like that where a standalone facility which isn't serviced accommodation and the majority of our accommodation is serviced accommodation, in other words it's hotel accommodation. Yeah, where so it the, doesn't the issue doesn't arise, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so we obviously had to make arrangements uh, urgently for, for, for facilities management, including linen supply, catering, uh, security, etc., etc. And how long did it take to conclude the contract? Like, what were the parameters that, that got you down to two So it would, have been, it, it would have been a negotiated procedure. Um, so there, there would have been discussion with the four providers, as I mentioned, that we would we would have recognised as having potential capacity to meet our needs in, in this area. So there would have been a, a discussion in each case. I don't know how long it took in any of the given cases, but all, in, in, in all instances, we would have been operating to very tight timelines in terms of trying to agree the arrangements. Um, in, in 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 each instance as well. Obviously, we would be aware of you know the the uh, the, the the standard pricing requirements from our point of view, and would have sought to get best value in terms of ensuring that it matched our requirements on that front. Um, because what I'm hearing on the ground is 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 concerning, and so what I'm curious about is the process the department went through in relation to assessing, for example, not just value for money but what food was going to be provided, what the range of the menu was, for example, for people who have come over in traumatic circumstances and very different circumstances, what consideration was given to, for example, in relation to diet, culture, religion, the provision of food, variation in diet, how long a person might be there. Is it all fresh food? Is it frozen food? Have there, has there been a need, for example, to purchase microwaves to deal with frozen food and reheating? Like, what is it? This is obviously a very, very sensitive um, these are very sensitive places. This is an obligation to look after people particularly well. And so I'm curious about the process through which the department went to assess how this company or indeed any company was going to provide that yeah, best. So, 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 I mean, we, we would have defined our requirements in terms of any of those contracts. And, and that's we, what I, that, that was yeah, my first question yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, so if you don't yeah, mind. Apologies, apologies. If, yeah, yeah. So, so we would have defined our requirements in terms of the level and the standard of 
of of provision that was required so within the contract in terms. Yeah. So so I can I can provide you with further detail on that, Deputy. Um, but I don't know I don't know the full level of detail. But it would certainly it would certainly be intended to address the kinds of issues that you're identifying there around dietary choice, dietary requirements, um, uh, the quality of food provision, the fact that fresh food is obviously required. All of those things would be addressed within the within the contractual requirements. We do inspect properties as well where where we receive complaints from Ukrainians who are here around the standard of what's on offer. And if, there, if any issues arise, we're in a position to address that. But because you're asking me the question in the context of a particular provider, I would have to say that I'm not aware of any issues in either of the two locations. I, yeah. To my knowledge, the, the, the standard of provision mm -hmm. is absolutely what we would expect and what we would have sought. But that's why I'm asking you this now. And I think, imagine if I was a Ukrainian person there, the last thing I would have the energy to do is complain about food. I might just absorb it. So I think it's probably appropriate that we proactively yeah. ask the questions. And it might, in that context, be helpful if the department would provide the, the, the committee with, for example, you know, the, 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 the weekly menu, you know what I mean? Just so that we can see this proactively and that people have had sight of, of, of the consideration that's gone into the care to, to the food that's been provided. Yeah, we can, we can, we can do that. You'll, you'll send that to us, yeah? Yeah, we can arrange for that, yeah. Um, and whether it's fresh or not fresh yeah. and whether other things have to be purchased to support that. The, do you know who is doing the catering and are they, are they an Irish company? Well, the contract is placed with, with Aramark in, in the two cases that you're referring to. In terms of the actual to. delivery, do you know what I mean? Is there any subcontracting element to it? Not, not, not that I know of, not that I know of. Um, one of the questions that was asked around the provision of services, particularly in the, those centres, was whether any partnerships or commercial partnerships or donations or anything had been considered in that, in that respect. Is that something that, that you considered at any stage? In, in those centres mm. specifically? Yeah. Um, I'm not, I, I can't comment on the two centres, and, 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 and to be fair... No, but in terms of the process generally, it doesn't have to be specifically yeah, about yeah, those yeah, two centres, but the, the, the department's thinking as it approaches these difficult questions. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so obviously, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a government portal for any goodwill offerings around support or contributions that private sector organisations may wish may wish to make, uh, which the OGP established at an early stage. Um, so, if 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 there are offerings that are available in terms of direct supports to Ukrainians yeah. who are here, there are arrangements in place for it's, it's, for it making those separately, connections. It exists separately, so it wasn't something part, part of the process. Sorry. It, it exists separately. It so does. It it, yeah, there are community response forums in place, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. as well in each of the local authority areas, which bring together all of the community and voluntary organisations and all of the, the public bodies, and they 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 again are a vehicle for ensuring that whatever supports are needed at a local level uh, in, in in respect of centres in the area uh, that, 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 that they are provided. Dunleary, Ratdown Local Authority also have NGO partnerships in respect to Ballyogan and that would be a feature as well in Mill Street where there are a number of uh, either NGO organisations, community and voluntary organisations or state providers who, who come on site to meet specific needs and to provide particular support. And I'm well aware that there are a lot of private sector organisations that again have made themselves known to centres where Ukrainians are located and are accommodated and have offered um, have, 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 have offered services of, of, of a variety of, um, of, of types. So all of that goodwill is, is <laughs> wonderful to see and, yeah. and, 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 and is, okay. is availed of. And how long is the, con the contract and is it going to be up for review or what have you, is it indefinite duration or what's the nature of it? Again, you're, you're referring specifically to the Aramark contract. So I suppose the, the intention there would be to regularise those contracts by, by putting out a formal request for tender in those locations where an, an, an initial emergency contract was placed in order to meet the immediate needs and to ensure that people so were fed on arrival. What, 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 uh, so the intention would be to do that within six months. Within six months of yeah, the awarding of the contract. Yeah, yeah. So there's, a, I mean, just to say, I mean, again, given given the scale of the response and the scale of activity and the scale of um, of, of of contracts that have been required to be put in place to accommodate you know, almost 24,000 people in a short space of time. Understand. There's a, there's a degree of catch up in terms of regularizing a lot of that. I appreciate, that. That. Yeah. I appreciate that. What I, but what I'm interested in is that, that, that we can see the parameters of that at yeah. an early stage. I don't want, for example, a, a public accounts committee to have to come back to this in a year where we could have asked these questions now. So as my understanding that you're going to provide to us a sense of the parameters that you put around the contract when you were whittling it down from four to two to one, what your, what your determinations, your requirements were, a site of the 
menus and what's been provided to people in those two in those two sites on a you know weekly over a week or over a month the the concentration on fresh food versus frozen food um is that and you're, you're going to provide that yeah to the we committee. can we can provide a note on all of that and just to say in and terms sorry of and the other thing was the the the, the, the and it, I mean this can be provided or take advice on this in the chair but the cost per person you know what I mean and the, the breakdown of that or the end or that may not be able to be provided at that level but if you could give us a sense of 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 the structure of it and what's been yeah, what's been provided, we don't have to come back to this later. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, I mean, obviously, we're compiling cost information um, in respect of the overall response and the yeah. overall accommodation requirements that are, are have been committed to, and there's a huge scale of investment involved in in accommodating, mm -hmm. uh, as I say, 23,000 people and rising. Um, it's the value, for money, it's the, the value for money piece that I'm interested in, actually. Do you know what I mean? And 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 how that's been assessed by the department and how that might be assessed over the six month period before the contract is you know, as you say, regularised. So that's the, really the, the question and how that value for money assessment is oh, being sorry, conducted sorry, versus sorry, other yeah, providers. I get you. You're, yeah. you're referring specifically to the, to the cost of those contracts per person, yeah, which which, 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 which would be part of the negotiated contract, so we can certainly yeah. provide information on that. And just to say, in respect of the four, I mean, what we found in, 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 in approaching the four was <laughs> that there were two, ultimately, that were in a position to meet our needs across the, the number of facilities that we sought to, to, that we sought to, uh, to procure contracts of this nature for. It is it, it, it's a concern, to be honest, because um, as we expand our accommodation uh, provision across independent facilities of this nature, we will be reliant on facilities management organisations to be able to provide services yeah. into these. And there's a there's there's potentially a capacity question there in the sector. The, 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 well, our concern might be when I say value for money, I don't necessarily mean cheapest. You know, we've dealt with that at this committee Absolutely. before, and that's why I'm asking the questions about quality. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, and you know, there is also the the opportunity. To to use local providers as yeah, well yeah. so it's a broad value for money question yeah, yeah, and quality yeah. and, and, and when i describe their capacity to respond to our needs i, I am talking about their their capacity to provide the quality of service that's required at the price that's required thank you thank you, thank you. deputy howard again